Harriet Greenway and the Five Slippery Gerbils Once upon a time there was a sweet girl called Harriet Greenway. She was on the way to see Molly Malkovich when she decided to take a shortcut through Spittleton Woods. It wasn't long before Harriet got lost. She looked around, but all she could see were trees. Nervously, she felt into her bag for her favorite toy, Henry the Hippo, but Henry the Hippo was nowhere to be found. Harriet began to panic. She felt sure she had packed Henry the Hippo. To make matters worse, she was starting to feel hungry. Unexpectedly, she saw a slippery gerbil dressed in a purple bowler hat, disappearing into the trees. How odd, thought Harriet. For the want of anything better to do, she decided to follow the peculiarly dressed gerbil. Perhaps it could tell him the way out of the forest. Eventually, Harriet reached a clearing. She found herself surrounded by houses made from different sorts of food. There was a house made from muffins, a house made from lollipops, a house made from chips, a house made from cakes and a house made from sweets. Harriet could feel her tummy rumbling. Looking at the houses did nothing to ease her hunger. Hello, she called. Is anybody there? Nobody replied. Harriet looked at the roof on the closest house and wondered if it would be rude to eat somebody else's chimney. Obviously it would be impolite to eat a whole house, but perhaps it would be considered acceptable to nibble the odd fixture or lick the odd fitting in a time of need. A cackle broke through the air, giving Harriet a fright. A witch jumped into the space in front of the houses. She was carrying a cage. In that cage was Henry the Hippo. Henry the Hippo shouted Harriet. She turned to the witch. That's my toy. The witch just shrugged. Give Henry the Hippo back, cried Harriet. Not on your Nelly, said the witch. At least let Henry the hippo out of that cage. Before she could reply, five slippery gerbils rushed in from a footpath on the other side of the clearing. Harriet recognized the one in the purple bowler hat that she'd seen earlier. The witch seemed to recognize him too. Hello, big gerbil, said the witch. Good morning. The gerbil noticed Henry the hippo. Who is this? That's Henry the hippo, explained the witch. Ooh. Henry the hippo would look lovely in my house. Give it to me, demanded the gerbil, the witch shook her head. Henry the hippo is staying with me. Um, excuse me, Harriet interrupted. Henry the hippo lives with me, and not in a cage. Big gerbil ignored her. Is there nothing you'll trade? He asked the witch, the witch thought for a moment, then said, I do like to be entertained. I'll release him to anybody who can eat a whole front door. Big Gerbil looked at the house made from sweets and said, No problem, I could eat an entire house made from sweets if I wanted to. That's nothing, said the next Gerbil. I could eat two houses, there's no need to show off, said the witch. Just eat one front door and I'll let you have Henry the hippo. Harriet watched, feeling very worried. She didn't want the witch to give Henry the hippo to Big Gerbil. She didn't think Henry the hippo would like living with a slippery gerbil, away from her house and all her other toys. The other four gerbils watched while Big Gerbil put on his bib and withdrew a knife and fork from his pocket. I'll eat this whole house, said Big Gerbil. Just you watch. Big Gerbil pulled off a corner of the front door of the house made from muffins. He gulped it down smiling, and went back for more. And more. And more. Eventually, Big Gerbil started to get bigger, just a little bit bigger at first. But after a few more forkfuls of muffins, he grew to the size of a large snowball and he was every bit as round. Erm, I don't feel too good, said Big Gerbil. Suddenly, he started to roll. He'd grown so round that he could no longer balance. Help, he cried, as he rolled off down a slope into the forest. Big Gerbil never finished eating the front door made from muffins and Henry the Hippo remained trapped in the witch's cage. Average Gerbil stepped up, and approached the house made from lollipops. I'll eat this whole house, said Average Gerbil. Just you watch. Average Gerbil pulled off a corner of the front door of the house made from lollipops. She gulped it down smiling and went back for more, and more, and more. After a while, Average Gerbil started to look a little queasy. She grew greener, and greener. A woodcutter walked into the clearing. What's this bush doing here? He asked. I'm not a bush, I'm a gerbil, said Average Gerbil. It talks, exclaimed the woodcutter. Those talking bushes are the worst kind. I'd better take it away before somebody gets hurt. No, wait, cried Average Gerbil as the woodcutter picked her up. But the woodcutter ignored her cries and carried the gerbil away under his arm. Average Gerbil never finished eating the front door made from lollipops and Henry the hippo remained trapped in the witch's cage. 
Little Gerbil stepped up and approached the house made from chips. Little Gerbil pulled off a corner of the front door of the house made from chips. He gulped it down smiling and went back for more. And more. And more. After five or six platefuls, Little Gerbil started to fidget uncomfortably on the spot. He stopped eating chips for a moment, then grabbed another forkful. But before he could eat it, there came an almighty roar. A bottom burp louder than a rocket taking off propelled Little Gerbil into the sky. Help, cried Little Gerbil. I'm scared of heights. Little Gerbil was never seen again. Little Gerbil never finished eating the front door made from chips and Henry the Hippo remained trapped in the witch's cage. Tiny Gerbil stepped up and approached the house made from cakes. I'll eat this whole house, said Tiny Gerbil. Just you watch. Tiny Gerbil pulled off a corner of the front door of the house made from cakes. She gulped it down smiling and went back for more. And more. And more. However, on the next mouthful, the food fell straight out of Tiny Gerbil's mouth. She tried to stuff in another fork full of cakes, but once again, the food fell out. There just wasn't enough room left in her belly. This is just not fair, declared Tiny Gerbil and stomped off into the forest. Tiny Gerbil never finished eating the front door made from cakes and Henry the Hippo remained trapped in the witch's cage. Even tinier Gerbil stepped up and approached the house made from sweets. I eat this whole house, said even tinier Gerbil. Just you watch. Even tinier Gerbil pulled off a corner of the front door of the house made from sweets. He gulped it down smiling and went back for more. And more. And more. Suddenly, even tinier Gerbil stopped eating and started dancing. While he danced, he sang at the top of his lungs, Sweets. Watch me eat all the sweets. It looks as though the sweets are making you hyperactive, laughed the witch. Oh no they're not, cried even tinier Gerbil. I'm always this excited. With that, he walked into a tree. Bong. Even tinier Gerbil banged his head and fell backwards onto his bottom. He passed out, exhausted. Even tinier Gerbil never finished eating the front door made from sweets and Henry the Hippo remained trapped in the witch's cage. That's it, said the witch. I win. I get to keep Henry the Hippo. Not so fast, said Harriet. There is still one front door to go. The front door of the house made from aubergines. And I haven't had a turn yet. I don't have to give you a turn, laughed the witch. My game. My rules. The woodcutter's voice carried through the forest. I think you should give her a chance. It's only fair. Fine, said the witch. But you saw what happened to the gerbils. She won't last long. I'll be right back, said Harriet. What? said the witch. Where's your sense of impatience? I thought you wanted Henry the hippo back. Harriet ignored the witch and gathered a hefty pile of sticks. She came back to the clearing and started a small campfire. Carefully, she broke off a piece of the door of the house made from aubergines and toasted it over the fire. Once it had cooked and cooled just a little, she took a bite. She quickly devoured the whole piece. Harriet sat down on a nearby log. You fail, cackled the witch. You were supposed to eat the whole door. I haven't finished, explained Harriet. I am just waiting for my food to go down. When Harriet's food had digested, she broke off another piece of the door made from aubergines. Once more, she toasted her food over the fire and waited for it to cool just a little. She ate it at a leisurely pace then waited for it to digest. Eventually, after several sittings, Harriet was down to the final piece of the door made from aubergines. Carefully, she toasted it and allowed it to cool just a little. She finished her final course. Harriet had eaten the entire front door of the house made from aubergines. The witch stamped her foot angrily. You must have tricked me, she said. I don't reward cheating. I don't think so, said a voice. It was the woodcutter. He walked back into the clearing carrying his axe. This little girl won fair and square. Now hand over Henry the hippo or I will chop your broomstick in half. The witch looked horrified. She grabbed her broomstick and placed it behind her. Then, huffing, she opened the door of the cage. Harriet hurried over and grabbed Henry the hippo, checking that her favorite toy was all right. Fortunately, Henry the hippo was unharmed. Harriet thanked the woodcutter, grabbed a quick souvenir, and hurried on to meet Molly. It was starting to get dark. When Harriet got to Molly's house, she threw her arms around her. I was so worried, cried Molly. You are very late. As Harriet described her day, she could tell that Molly didn't believe her. So she grabbed a napkin from her pocket. What's that? asked Molly. Harriet unwrapped a doorknob made from muffins. 
pudding, she said. Molly almost fell off her chair. The end.